I must admit, as good as things were at WHAS, I still maintained a backup demo tape, just in case. You should always leave yourself options. But remember, the higher you rise, the fewer options there are above you. Skywatch 84, WHAS traffic tracker, Jim Ferguson. That overturned whiskey truck is off to the side of southbound I-65, just north of the Simonville exit, and uh, its side is cracked open like an egg, exposing the cargo there. there are, no however, doubt about it. The world's full of problems. Big ones, little ones. Just think, how many problems do you have a day? Five, ten, fifteen? If everyone in the United States had just ten problems, that would be two billion, one hundred million a day. And no wonder the country's in such terrible shape. What can we do about it? Well, you start by getting the problem out front so everyone can see. It take those funny little editorial cartoons in the daily newspaper. Most of them really hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I can hear it now. That's great for print, but I'm in broadcasting. And anyway, we talk about the world's problems on the news. You sure do. Doom and gloom. You've got to keep your sense of humor. Uh, have you ever heard of a radio cartoon? We've been hearing of late, of course, that there is a, a catastrophic fuel shortage uh, across the country. We have uh, invited as our guest uh, this afternoon Professor uh, Henry uh, Higginbotham. Professor Henry Higginbotham. Hig Higgin? Hig Higginbotham. Higginbotham. Yes, it's a, I don't know what it is actually. Pro but pro professor, now you, uh, what is uh, some of your background? What is your background in the fuel shortage crisis? Well, first of all, I think the important thing to discuss is my educational background. Yes, sir. Of course, yes. yes. Add, well, I am a high school, to the Clearwater. Yes, I am a high school graduate. Mm -hmm. I don't want to seem false about this. Uh, and uh, I would say mostly the reason I am something of an authority on the fuel shortage is because I drive a car. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, of course, this would... Um, make it imperative uh, that I know whether I'm going to get gas when I get to a service station. <laughs> oh, I, I always stop at those places that say eat and get gas. <laughs> and I frequently do, unfortunately. Uh, professor, now, uh, how serious is the fuel shortage crisis? Well, I don't. If you're not going anywhere, it won't bother you, and you don't like light in your home. Uh, people, I think hermits are going to enjoy it, because mm -hmm. it's going to raise their social status to the rest of us. <laughs> However, I feel, uh, and I feel this very strongly, that we're going to have to have some gasoline and some light, you see, along with uh, electric heat. Right, right. Well, how did the uh, crisis come about? What started the crisis? Well, actually, uh, we have traced it back, and I've done a lot of work on this for the past several months, because, mm -hmm. you know, the government knew about it before we did, and uh, I traced it back to a chap named Zemo Zemo Zinkhide. Uh, he had the first two names of the same because his father studied, studied at the christening. <laughs> it's uh, not only his father. Yes, I studied, well, I may be related to him, but... Um, Anyway, I was there, you see, and uh, I found out that this chap, Zemo Zemo, as he prefers to call himself, uh, was very negligent and left open a natural gas pipeline uh, and wasted, I must say he wasted, 30 million cubic feet of natural gas. 30 million cubic feet of natural gas, and that, that's what brought on the fuel uh, crisis? That's brought on the fuel, that was the beginning of it, and mm -hmm. of course uh, it's weakened us all around, and uh, I would like to say this, uh, it's a good time if you're in that area to quit smoking. I would think, yes. yeah. Well, what what uh, punitive action has been taken against this uh, Zemo Zinkai? Well, they're try they're being a bit drastic. I think after all, the chap did make just a mistake. He didn't mean to do it, but they're forcing him to go back to his wife, and uh, that's a lifetime punishment. Right. As I see it. I, I met her, and uh, he's going back to her. But uh, of course, it's it's caused a great deal of trouble. You see, we. Uh, well, can't can't this natural gas be made up or restored? Or? Well, we're working on something now. You see, uh, we thought for a while we might be able to keep some kind of an attraction uh, object, uh, perhaps in Congress, and we could get the natural gas from the speeches mm -hmm. of the politicians. <laughs> and if we could bottle that, of course, we could. <laughs> 
we could lift off for that's another space project. Yes, I suppose. Yes, that's true. Uh, the House of uh, Misrepresentation and uh, the Congress and all those places, you see there's a lot of natural gas. Well, now, there. this was just in the natural gas field. What about uh, liquid gas and, uh, and electricity and, and all of these areas? Well, I don't know uh, what to say about that. I haven't been on that, you see. Mm -hmm. I've been working on natural gas. They have other chaps out there working on this, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, who knows? Who can say what caused that? Well, well how can we as uh, average citizens uh, help in the conservation of uh, natural gas fuels? Move to Australia. I think that's the... Because that's what it is. Natural gas is down under. And um, we've got... <laughs> Seriously, we've got to help ourselves in this matter. It's a very strange situation we're in right now. And I believe that if there's one bit of advice I could give to anybody today who is worried about natural gas or electricity, the shortage of fuel and so on, is to get your passport in order. Professor, how long do you think it'll be uh, before we regroup our losses in the fuel shortage uh, situation? Well, I don't know. Of course, we're going through extensive scientific tests. What we're trying to do, you see, is come up with some sort of a substitute for natural gas. Mm -hmm. In other words, we'd have to call it unnatural gas, I suppose, but it would do all the things natural gas does. So uh, a replacement or substitute uh, type of uh, substance. You certainly do catch on. Do you think, Professor, that this is just uh, part of an ecological uh, problem? No, I don't. I, I think it didn't start that way. I think this has been... Uh, it is now an ecological problem, no question of that, I suppose. But it started out simply as waste. We waste. know we are a wasteful group. I mean, we. How is that? Would you give us well, an example uh, of waste? I suppose yes. Uh, suppose, for example, uh, you leave the television on. Mm -hmm. uh, you you go into the kitchen, you know, to prepare something to eat, and the television runs for thirty minutes, and there's nobody watching it. Mm. Now that's a waste, isn't it? I suppose. I suppose it is. Sort of helps the ratings occasionally, I guess, it's, but uh, it kills Nielsen. They not only don't know what you're watching, they don't know who's not watching it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would be waste, Professor. I suppose it would. <laughs> well, Professor, our time is uh, running nigh, or near, or something. It's running out, actually, is what it's doing, sir. We want to thank you very much for being with us and discussing the fuel shortage crisis. Uh, do you have any final words? Well, I have, uh, in honor of our problem, I think uh, we need to go forward with a, a progressive spirit. So I have composed a little song. A song? Would you care to join me? Oh. I have a copy here. Certainly. Uh, this is it here, huh? Yes, that's correct. O okay, well, uh, let's see if we can get the orchestra struck up over there. All right. Thanks for the memories The few we used to have The things we used to do it's apparent to us now They've all gone up the flue Oh, thank you, warm fuel Thanks for the memories Of light bulbs in the dark A fireplace with sparks Now it's come at last We're out of natural gas Oh, thank you, lost fuel